Hi, this is Victoria Campisi with 1851 Franchise, and today I'm here with Marianne O'Connell, president of FranWise for our Top Women in Franchising series. Thank you so much for joining us today, Marianne. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. Um, so to get started, can you just share your journey in becoming a franchise leader? Well, I don't know what the journey to leadership was because it's all been very organic, but I started in franchising a long time ago, back in uh, 1979, with my husband as the first franchisee for Money Mailer. Um, we became multi-unit franchisees. And then when our situation changed, he kept the franchise, and then I stepped into the role of being a franchise executive. So I worked there for six years, and I was vice president of franchise operations. And I will say in terms of women in leadership, there wasn't a lot of opportunity there. Um, it was still early days, and there was a lot of old-fashioned ideas about women in leadership. I moved on from there, did a little consulting on my own, and realized I needed to learn more. So I went back and worked for a great company, which was Great Clips. And that was where I learned leadership skills, and I watched very strong women in the top roles. It was very educational, and they're so phenomenal. Um, but when I left there, that was about 23, almost 24 years ago, I started FranWise, and I have been running that business ever since. I was encouraged in leadership through, in IFA through Dan Martin of IFX, who said, get in there, make some noise, your voice should be heard. And I really respected that. Now I think a lot of people are wishing I made less noise. Um, but it was really just that push from a peer that helped. Great. Um, what are some unique challenges and opportunities for women in franchising? I think the challenges can still be there, but they're much less. Um, when I came into business, even before getting into franchising, the hierarchy was coming from mostly a military background. We weren't all that far out from World War II and from Vietnam. So there was a very top-down mentality. And if you look, at, if you're coming from a military position in those days, we didn't have women in leadership roles then. So I just don't think the men saw it. It, it wasn't anything intentional. They just didn't see that as part of it. I don't think those challenges are there now, but there can be some unconscious biases that some people have um, and it's simply just like any person it's your ability to live up to expectations that you set for yourself that you allow others to set for you and i say that because you might have exalted expectations of me and it's my job to tell you if i can or cannot meet those um, and just do what you say and show up where I really see some of the greatest opportunity for women has been in the, the vendor supplier side. I did, a well, this was many years ago, I did kind of a back of the envelope digestion of who was there for women in leadership by looking at who was registered for the IFA conference. And the women in leadership roles were still very small, but it was a much greater percentage within the supplier space because women can make their own opportunities. If they don't find them in the lane they're driving in, change lanes. Great. How would you define success in your role? Well, that's always an interesting question. Um, I'm one of the people that does not define my success by my bank account. I define my success by how well I sleep at night. And by that, I mean, did I deliver the best I could for my clients and in delivering the best, it's not just to make them happy. Have I been truthful with them? Have I tried to show them um, what I could conceive as the best path to franchising? Sometimes that means that my success is that I was allowed to tell somebody franchising wasn't for them and still let them walk away from our conversation with their pride intact because franchising isn't for everyone. So I determine success by growing, by getting educated, and by doing what's right by the others in my life. Awesome. 
What advice would you give to franchisors for female franchisees? I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Yes. Okay. Um, how um, would how you is give, them, sorry, what advice would you give to franchisors looking to support female franchisees? I do think that as much as we'd like to say everyone is the same, we're not. We're different but equal. And I think franchisors need to understand that women intrinsically come from a different point of view. We tend to be more collaborative and we tend to be more loquacious. I mean, there are studies that show we speak more in a conversation than men do. So be patient and listen, and then just get the hell out of our way. Uh, we can do really well if, you know, horse metaphor, if you give us our lead, you know, just let the reins go slack and let us do what we need to do. And don't misinterpret this as we're saying, yes, bad habit. We all tend to listen and nod our heads. <laughs> Great. Um, what is your advice for women who want to enter the franchise industry? Do it. That's my number one piece of advice. Absolutely do it. Um, I just think franchising, I mean, this is a model that has been my life for over 40 years now. And what I love about it is that it is never boring. Um, your one brand changes or you can change brands, which can put you in an entirely different vertical. So you're always learning. And in franchising, women can enter on any level that they're looking for. Um, you can, if, if you're looking for something that's very flexible, maybe you're just working for a franchisee part-time. Maybe you're working with a franchisor who has more flex hours that work for you. If you are an executive, it doesn't mean you had to grow up in the franchising space. I've talked to um, many people. Um, when I uh, interviewed Kim Guberov from Pertech on my podcast, Franchising wasn't her background, and yet she found great success and brought great success by coming in. So the flexibility within this crazy world of ours is limitless, and it will fit the needs of whatever woman wants to come in. Great. Um, and is there anything else you think our audience should know? Yeah, I think that sometimes men and women are put off by some business models because they're more heart driven and they might think that business is cold and demanding and unyielding. There are places for those three things, but this is a business model that's all about heart. Yeah, everybody's got to make money at the end of the day, but the people who are really good at it are good at understanding the, I, I don't want to use a cliche, the why, but the heartstrings of why did someone come into their system, whether they're an employee or a franchisee or a supplier? What are they trying to accomplish? And if we can all listen to that, as well as the customer demand, which I think we spend way more time looking at that than looking internally at why do people want to get into this business? Um, so I think that if we can slow the pace a little bit, and listen to what's actually happening in our in our lives more, then we're limitless. Great. Well, that's everything I have for you. Thanks so much for joining. My pleasure. Thank you.